Welcome back to the Best Buy Theater in New York. Dave Fontempo, Bernard Hopkins, and Paulie Malinaji with you. Danny Jacobs and Giovanni Lorenzo entering the ring for our middleweight main event. Lorenzo on his way in now. He's 32 and 5 with 24 knockouts. He represented the Dominican Republic in the 2000 Olympics and was able to win one fight in his last fight. Scored a one-round victory in March in the Dominican He's Republic. With 22 wins coming by way of knockout from Brooklyn, New York. Give it up for Danny Miracle Man. Well, Danny Miracle Man indeed battling with cancer and started the Danny Jacobs Foundation in January. And he had an event last week and they raised over a thousand dollars to help people fight back. Danny Jacobs, an inspiration for all of those who are standing up and fighting against cancer. He's also 25 and one with 22 knockouts in his other career. That is a fighter. So there is Danny Jacobs, 26 years old. Comes off a four round TKO victory in his last fight and that was at Barclays. So he comes across the bridge here to fight. Jacob 26, Lorenzo 32. The height the same, you see the weight. A little bit of a reach advantage for Lorenzo, not much. We'll see how that plays in. All right, let's get the introductions now. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, good evening and welcome to the Best Buy Theater here in the crossroads of the world, Times Square, New York City, for the main event of the evening. Brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions, sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairwoman in Attendance, Melvina Lathan, and the WBC, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Ringside, Jerry Bolin. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest ringside, John McKay, Tony Paolillo, and John Potere. Your referee for this contest, Mr. Steve Willis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant WBC Continental America's middleweight title. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears black with orange. He weighed in at 158.6 pounds. His professional record, 32 victories against five defeats. He has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. From New York, New York, the former world title challenger, El Chico Malo, Giovanni Lorenzo. Lorenzo. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears black with red. He weighed in at a ready 159.2 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 25 victories, only one defeat. He has 22 wins coming by way of knockout. From the beautiful borough of Brooklyn, New York, the Miracle Man, Danny Jacobs. Jacobs. to the pro Jacobs crowd. Waits for that ring to get a little smaller and they'll get brought into the middle. And here, final words. Okay, gentlemen, both receive the instruction in the dress room. Obey the commands, protect yourselves at all times. Right now, the belt line, right here. Everything out here is low. Everything here is low, all right? Tap it up, let's go to work. Tap it up, tap it up. Danny Jacobs not buying into the stare down there. That's when you've been fighting cancer. What's a stare down in a ring? He <laughs> smiled at it. Absolutely. I mean, this is an incredible story. But I'm looking for a great fight because, you know, 
Lorenzo didn't come in and lay down. He's coming in and trying to do with one person only did, and that is take him out. And Lorenzo 32 and 5 in the champions that beat him. Sebastian Sylvester, Felix Sturm, Hassan Endom, Marquez. Also lost to Sam Solomon. Ah, that's a good uh, that's a good group. Now Paulie, what does a guy have to do to just get over the top in those fights? Well, here's the thing, a lot of them were in those guys' home countries. So uh, again, you, you don't know how those fights really went. For example, the Sebastian Sylvester fight was for the IBF middleweight title, a world title, and it was a split decision in Germany. You know, uh, Sylvester was the German fighter, you know. So a lot of uh, you know, a, a lot of the way Giovanni Lorenzo's career has played out has been a little bit of, of bad luck as well. He's had to take these big fights, not just in guys' hometowns, but guys' home countries, where it's always tough to win. But he's a live guy, aside from those fights. You know, he's won every fight he was supposed to. Came up a little short in those fights. Big right hand by Danny Jacobs. Ed Jacobs throwing the right hand over the low left hand of Giovanni Lorenzo. Lorenzo and, took it well. And one thing I see Danny is doing often right early, he's giving him a little bit of movement. He's not running, he's not using any energy. He's just stepping to the left and to the right and not being a stationary target for Lorenzo. Danny Jacobs, uh, a pro since 2007. He was a 2006 U.S. amateur champion. So that boxing background is there. Oh yeah, both, guys have, both guys have that pedigree. You know, uh, Lorenzo's a little older, but he was a great amateur as well. Jacobs, obviously, with a great story and a great amateur pedigree. You know, I gotta say, Danny Jacobs looks to me in the best shape of his career. I've never seen him look this good as far as uh, being in physical condition. Body-wise, he looks like he made the weight great. And uh, he looks sharp early on. His focus is just, you know, when you get a second chance like he has, I've gotten. I mean, his focus seems to be I'm taking it, I'm going for it, I got a second chance. I'm going to do what I have to do in the gym and also in this fight to try to go ahead and establish myself as a major, major player in the middleweight division. Make every minute of your life count. Well, you have he's to. been able to do. You, you don't know what's ahead, so you maximize now. And he's been a real inspiration. Double jab here. For people that uh, have to fight against this and the intimidation that all brings, the fear that all brings, now you see a star here fighting back. But Lorenzo has his also, he has his, 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 his own dreams. And, you know, talking to him, he has, you know, that demeanor and he has that confidence. He believes he can come here in New York and be... Danny Jacobs, and, that, and and that's what I got from him in my conversation. And he's coming here to try to win. He's been in, like Paulie mentioned earlier, which is correct, he's been in it with quality and world champions. So he has the experience of that type of atmosphere. Always in their countries. This time, he's not even leaving the country. He's just got to go to the home city. So, Jacobs and Lorenzo come to the end of round one. We start round two, Danny Jacobs and Giovanni Lorenzo. Nice middleweight matchup. We know who the world champions are in the middleweight division. This is a look at what's coming up right behind the hills of the middleweight champions yep. that exist today. And, it, and it's almost uh, like an audition for Danny Jacobs in that the way he handles Giovanni Lorenzo, who's a guy who's been in big middleweight title fights but just come up a little short, 
Um, so, so the way he handles him uh, will tell us a, will go a long way in telling us if Danny belongs in with the major world champions now. You know, uh, the only guys that have beaten Giovanni Lorenzo are of that ilk, are of that quality. So if Danny Jacobs can add his name to that list, it'll show us and it'll go a long way in showing the world that he belongs in, in, among those middleweight champions as well. Gennady Golovkin and a few guys like that that uh, out Peter, there. Peter Quillen. Peter Quillen. A new champion, Darren Barker, who's won over the weekend. I'm starting to see Danny use his jab a little more, which Lorenzo is not doing. And if Danny continued to throw more than, you know, just one jab and touch him and set up other punches after that, you know, I, I, I like to see the reaction of Lorenzo as the rounds go on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and it's keeping Lorenzo off balance. It's keeping Lorenzo's rhythm from getting any momentum. Runs are giving a lot of jittery stuff, but no jab. Just missing over the top with the right hand with Giovanni Lorenzo as he tried to lure Danny Jacobs into him. Try to set a little bit of a trap. Both guys, the schooling, you see the jab, the jab at the same time, need be. Play off each other, try to cut off the ring, and uh, have to like the balance they have, even after they miss a shot, how they're in position to defend themselves and also right to hand. take the next chance. The Rizzo just hit Jacob with a good right hand after the jab, you know, which is, you know, there for both guys. Both guys have an opportunity to get those punches off. It's just who's going to get there first, Paul. Absolutely. And you can't get reckless. Both guys are quality enough for to where if the other one gets reckless, they will pay with some sharp counter punching. Is a jab getting in here? by Danny Jacobs jabbing and moving. One thing Lorenzo has to do though, he's got to start cutting the ring off. Danny has had his way as far as circling the ring the way he wants to. We'll have a little bit more time to talk about that the next round with Bernard because you're the master of that. You've authored some stories on it. And when we have a little bit more time the next round, we'd like to get to that with you, Bernard. Well, Lorenzo right now is, is putting more rough stuff on that Danny. And Danny didn't that. like that. Danny reacted, you know, sort of not complained, but he sort of didn't like the way Lorenzo was throwing certain things to him. And you know what? That's to Lorenzo's credit to get Danny to react that way. Yep, the veteran. So a little bit about that. Ex. Jacobs and Lorenzo counting it down here at the end of round two. You see, right now he gets the shot. Lorenzo hits Danny in back of his head. Danny's reaction. And that's the thing you gotta be careful with complaining. It's protect yourself at all times. You, get caught, you can get hit with another shot while you're complaining. In the round three we go. Danny Jacobs against Giovanni Lorenzo. Guys with real good records and uh, a good pedigree. We're here at the Best Buy Theater in New York. As a warning for Lorenzo. Lorenzo shaking his head like Danny's a crybaby, but he knows what he's doing. He's trying to get in Danny's head. And Lorenzo also know that this is something that, you know, he don't mind, you know, because he seemed to be taking a play. And it didn't seem like a hard punch that Danny got hit with. But you know what I like to see Danny Jacobs do? This is the part of that growth and development. Take that left jab. When Lorenzo has his hands down, oh, nice jab chance. at his chest, jab at his body, touch something, touch his shoulders. Get the feel of the guy and stop reaching for the head with the jab. If it ain't touching the jab or the head, let the jab touch the body. Just he just did it with the body shot with the left jab. That stops everything, and then he can get off of the punches. And then tries to send a message there, and then goes in to try and uh, say, uh, no harm intended. And we resume. Dave Bontempo, Paulie Malinaggi, and Bernard Hopkins with you here in New York as Lorenzo lands a good, stiff, solid jab. But I, I like what I like what Danny did a few uh, about a few seconds ago. He pushed Lorenzo back hard into the ropes, kind of let him know, hey, listen, you're not gonna get rough with me. As you take a look, tonight's CompuBox stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Play weekly draft-style fantasy boxing games for cash. Danny, around here. Go ahead. Danny has uh, a mouse, if you see it, once he turns around to, towards us, he has a mouse on the left side, maybe a cut. And he knows he's cut, so he's trying to right now take advantage of the opportunity to try to get cut. He's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. Danny Jacobs with the was rolled. They both threw the dice. And Danny Jacobs comes out with all the money. 
A huge hook as he opens up. And what a moment for Danny Jacobs. They were mixing it up, and he went for broke. So you made me eat my words. I, I, I was worried about him with the training that way, you know, both guys throwing punches, not knowing where they're coming from. But Danny was the one who had the shorter shots, and he landed a beautiful shot that just took the consciousness from Johnny I Lorenzo. I don't know, Paulie, was that a the headbutt? Were they going to show maybe the replay later? Or was it a right hand? But I'm telling you, oh. when Danny realized he was cut, he went into another mindset, and that's the way you do it. Great you point. don't want the referees, the judges, to decide it for you. It, it was so early that it just would have ended up being a no contest. Great point. Had the fight been stopped at that point. A, a, a lot of times what happens, a lot of times what happens, you see the other guy's blood and it wakes you up. But Danny saw his own blood. We're going to take a look and see how it all unfolded at the end of this fight. Traps Lorenzo on the rope. Great shot. Great shot. And listen, Danny threw a good left hand and then the right hand. But right before that, right before those, that set of punches, he made a move that put him in position to be able to throw those shots at Lorenzo without being a watch. No, the, there, right, right underneath. Right underneath. He's that little step aside. He, did, he went underneath the hook and kind of stepped over and was able to throw the, the rest of the comedy. Here it is. He, he, didn't step, step he didn't stay in front of Lorenzo. He stepped around and got the angle and threw the left and the right hand, exactly. which caught Lorenzo right on the button. Exactly. X and House, you would know once you step around, your, your, your punches can land, the other guys can't land. So he was in a non-risk situation. Slow this down and see after the nice movement by Danny Jacobs how he is able to finish the job here. Great shot. And with both fighters opening up, the fact that Jacobs was able to think on the fly is what brings him the victory here. Danny Jacobs is the truth. In a shootout, he took advantage of the moment, took what it gave him, and he is able to stop Giovanni Lorenzo. So Jacobs gets the win over Lorenzo. This is how he's able to do it. Bombs away, and Danny Jacobs is the winner. Stay with us. All right, explosive ending. Danny Jacobs gets the victory over Giovanni Lorenzo. Let's hear the final numbers. Get there in a second. And we'll find out the exact time of that. But in any case, Danny Jacobs gets the victory here over Giovanni Lorenzo. Lights out for Danny Jacobs, and let's get the numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Willis calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and five seconds of round number three. Your winner by TKO and the new WBC Continental America's middleweight champion from Brooklyn, New York, the Miracle Man, Danny Jacobs. All right, so that's the triumph for him. And for Giovanni Lorenzo, he gets stopped. Got a chance to look at the final numbers. Jacobs 33-23, but a few of those were big at the end. The numbers were pretty close as it was working out at that point. But he had the thunder in his fists, and Danny Jacobs landed the few that really counted at the end of this fight. And so he comes up with the win. Will Smith look alike? Yes, absolutely. I was just checking that out, right? Yep, so Danny Jacobs has himself a nice triumph. And uh, a great way to do it in front of his home crowd. Gets this in the third round. And let's go to Paulie.
We're just discussing his victory. You know, Danny, this is a guy that's never been stopped before. You yeah. know, you not only did you stop him, you got him out of there practically cold. Yeah, well, I, I owe it all to the man above. You know, God has gotten me through in my life. And with this second opportunity, I was going to make a statement. And I feel like I made a good statement tonight. And my Brooklyn peoples, they came out to support me. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, early, earlier on, let's talk about a little bit before the knockout. He was seemed like he was trying to get in your head, trying to give yeah. you a little bit of the rough stuff. Yeah. Um, did, would that, did that at all get in your head? Did that motivate you to want to get that knockout? Did that make you come out of your game plan? We saw a little bit of, well, Ronald Hopkins was talking about how yeah. Lorenzo was showing you that to get you out of your game plan. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, how did that make you feel? Well, I knew I definitely had the skills over him. I knew I had that. I knew he had experience. So I knew the factors that he was giving me in the ring was only... Bernard Hopkins moves, you know, trying to get inside your head. And uh, I didn't let it get to me. You know, I knew he was strong, but once he hit me with a good left hook, I said, okay, let's go. The Brooklyn came out of me, and we got him out of there. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we, it was almost, you know, a lot of fighters, they start bleeding, and they kind of go into a shell. Yeah. We were talking about how you started bleeding, and it, it kind of brought that animal out of you. Did you know you were cut and, that, and become more offensive, or did you just become offensive because you saw your moment? Well, I think... You know, maybe a couple years ago with the inexperience, I probably got a little panicky, but I calmed down. Once I, I wiped my glove and I see that he cut me, but I calmed down a little bit. I said, take your time, and I know he's going to come after me. And when he came, I said, I got something for you. And uh, we hit him with something real good. A big knockout win tonight, Dan Jacobs. You know, it is a time to get these kind of wins. This is a, a step up in your career. You haven't been on this level since a hero.